10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have liftoff. Battery discharge is normal. And there we have it. Our 25th electron launch vehicle is off the pad for this mission and project progressing well on its way to low Earth orbit. Soon the vehicle will approach the point in its journey when it experiences the most amount of stress, maximum aerodynamic pressure, which is known as max Q. And there we have it. We have word from Mission Control that we can confirm that Electron has successfully passed through Max Q and is continuing on its southeastern trajectory off the coast of New Zealand. The first stage's Rutherford engines are firing perfectly as we come up to the next major milestone ahead of the first separation event for Electron. AOS Chatham Station. We're approaching main engine cutoff, or MECO. This is when Electron throttles down just a bit before shutting off those nine Rutherford engines on stage one we mentioned earlier. This reduction in thrust allows for a clean separation of the first and second stages before the singular Rutherford engine on the second stage fires up and takes the satellites the rest of the way into orbit. We should see both of those actions on screen and hear the call outs from our operators in mission control shortly. Miko confirmed. Stage separation confirmed. Stage two ignition. There we go. We have confirmed a successful transition from the first to second stages of Electron's flight with Miko, stage separation, and second stage ignition all nominal. You can now see the orange glow of the space optimized HV Rutherford battery. engine as it carries on into space. The shell at the top of Electron, known as the payload fairing, protects the satellites as the vehicle launches through Earth's atmosphere. Since we've now cleared the lower, lower atmosphere, those satellites don't need that protection anymore. In fact, we need to jettison that protective Fairing shell so we can safely deploy the satellites to low Earth orbit. Holding nominal. There goes the payload fairing. Black Sky's satellites are now expo Go exposed to space, no longer needing this shell to protect them, as Electron has already punched through Earth's atmosphere to take them to their orbital destination. We've got a short time gap now between this latest event and the next one coming up for Electron's second stage, which involves swapping out the batteries that power the second stage Rutherford engine. The mission is continuing nominally as we approach that next milestone, with the second stage travelling at nearly 9,000 kilometres an hour at an altitude of 139 kilometres. If you've just joined us, we've had a great start to today's mission so far. Electron successfully cleared the pad at Launch Complex 1 just a few moments ago, and we're now well on our way to space, having completed a successful pass through Max-Q, main engine cutoff, and stage separation to reach this point now in the mission. Electron's second stage with the Black Sky satellites on board is headed to low Earth orbit 430 kilometers above Earth, where they'll join the rest of Black Sky's constellation of Earth-observing smallsats.
As we continue without missing a beat, <laughs> Electron is currently coasting in its second stage of flight before our kick stage kicks in Pitch, push, and takes phenomenal. those two Black Sky Global satellites to where they need to go. Mission Control is reporting all systems remain healthy on the vehicle as it travels at nearly 12,000 kilometers per hour. Back to the mission on your screen, we're coming up to a milestone you'll see used only on Electron. The swap out of batteries that our Rutherford engines draw their energy from to continue operating their pumps. The vehicle has run through the set of batteries we started with at stage separation, and so now the second stage of the vehicle needs to swap over to a fresh battery to keep things going. We call this move the battery hot swap. We should hear that call come from Mission Control shortly, but keep an eye on your screen too, as sometimes you can Guidance catch a glimpse of them falling away. Seconds remaining. HV battery discharge nominal, approaching hot swap. Starting throttle down. Swap successful. Battery Jason. And there goes the call for a successful battery hot swap. You've seen the shiny silver object on your screen falling away from the second stage engine. Electron continues well onto its target okay, 430 it's kilometers orbit, traveling at a speed of 16,000 kilometers per hour and an altitude of 200 kilometers. HV battery discharge holding Electron nominal. is currently in its second stage burn on the way to low Earth orbit to deliver Black Sky's payloads. We know that Black Sky's constellation can be used by all sorts of groups and stage organizations between nominal. government, commercial and aid. But what does that actually look like on the ground? To give you some idea, Black Sky's AI-powered constellation was recently used to evaluate the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on shipping and supply chain logistics around the world. Coming up next will be Second Engine Cutoff, or SECO, on Electron Stage 2. This manoeuvre follows relatively the same procedure as Main Engine Cutoff, where the Rutherford engine on the second stage will throttle down before shutting off, ahead of separation between the second stage and the kick stage. There will be a bit of a gap between kick stage separation and payload deployment, as this stage separation places the kick stage in an elliptical orbit, orbit of Earth first. We'll explain what happens then after we receive confirmation from Mission Control, first of SECO, and stage separation. Entering burnout detect. Guidance is in Tona, 27 seconds remaining. Tico. And great news there from Mission Control with a successful SECO. The kick stage is now separated ahead of payload deployment, which is set to take place in the next 45 minutes or so. 
Due to the innovative payload design intended to keep Electron lean and efficient, we won't have live video of payload deployment for this mission. But we will be back to listen out for those final few calls from Mission Control, as well as watch an animated view of the end of the mission to visualise what's happening up there in low Earth orbit. We'll take a bit of a break now, and we will see you back here in time for payload deployment in about 40 minutes or so. Stay tuned. <laughs> 